In this video, we learn more about the power rule for integration, and in particular, we learn how to deal with powers of x on the denominator. Remember, the power rule for integration states the following. The integral of a times x to the power of n is equal to a over n plus 1 times x to the power of n plus 1 plus c. We've seen how to use this. We know how to integrate things like x squared or 3x to the power of 5. But what if we had to integrate 5 over x to the power of 4? Well, the trick is, and I should say the good news is, we can use what we know from algebra to integrate this. Remember, a over x to the power of n is equal to a times x to the power of negative n. That means that anything looking like, say, 3 over x to the power of 4 can be written as 3 times x to the power of negative 4. Or let's say we had 2 over x to the power of 5, then that could be written 2 times x to the power of negative 5. Using that, we can now use the power rule for integration for any integral looking like this one. And let's go ahead and do this. This can be rewritten as the integral of 5 times x to the power of negative 4. Now using the power rule, we can go ahead and write that this equals to 5 over negative 4 plus 1 times x to the power of negative 4 plus 1 plus c. That leads us to negative 5 thirds times x to the power of negative 3 plus c. And of course we could write this as negative 5 thirds times 1 over x to the power of 3 plus c. And there we go. That's how we can use the power rule for integration to deal with powers of x on the denominator. Let's see a few more written examples. As a first example, we're asked to find the following integral, which is the integral of 3 over x squared. Now, using what we just learned, we're going to start by rewriting this integral as follows. That's 3 over x squared. We can write this as the integral of 3 times x to the power of negative 2. Now that we've done that, we can use the power rule for integration. And we can go ahead and write that this equals to 3 over negative 2 plus 1 times x to the power of negative 2 plus 1 plus some constant of integration, c. Carrying on, this leads us to 3 over negative 1 times x to the power of negative 1 plus c. This, of course, is equal to negative 3 times x to the power of negative 1 plus c. And we could also write this as negative 3 over x plus c. Let's look at the next, next example. We have to find the integral 2 over x to the power of 4. Well, again, the first thing we'll do is rewrite this, making sure that x is written as a power of x with a negative exponent. So that would be the integral of 2 times x to the power of negative 4. We now use the power rule, which leads to 2 over negative 4 plus 1 times x to the power of negative 4 plus 1 plus c. Negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3, so that leads to 2 over negative 3 times x to the power of negative 3 plus c. This equals to negative 2 thirds times x to the power of negative 3 plus c. We can of course write x to the power of negative 3 as 1 over x to the power of 3, which leads to negative 2 thirds times 1 over x to the power of 3 plus c. Finally, we can write this as negative 2 over 3x cubed plus c. And there we go. Let's look at a couple more examples. In this next example, we're asked to find the integral of 2 over 3x squared. Now, we'll be seeing more about this at a later stage, but a quick trick here to avoid silly mistakes is to realize that we can actually write this as 2 thirds of 1 over x squared dx. Doing this allows us to avoid making mistakes with the fractions. Now we carry on the usual way, and we write 1 over x squared as a negative power of x. So this would equal to 2 thirds times the integral of x to the power of negative 2 dx. Carrying on, this leads us to 2 thirds times 1 over negative 2 plus 1 
times x to the power of negative 2 plus 1 plus c. This leads us to 2 thirds plus 1 over negative 1 times x to the power of negative 1 plus c. 1 over negative 1 is just negative 1, and negative 1 times 2 thirds is negative 2 thirds. So this leads us to negative 2 thirds times x to the power of negative 1 plus c. Finally, we could also write this as negative 2 over 3x plus c. One more example, we need to find the integral shown here. Now, this often off-puts a few people at first. It's important to realize, when we write dx on the numerator, as we've done here, this is the same thing as writing 1 over x to the power of 5 times dx. Now that we've seen that, we can go ahead and write this as a negative power of x, that's x to the power of negative 5, and now using the power rule, we can go ahead and write this equals to 1 over negative 5 plus 1 times x to the power of negative 5 plus 1 plus some constant c. That leads us to 1 over negative 4 times x to the power of negative 4 plus c. Finally, that equals to negative 1 quarter times x to the power of negative 4 plus c. We could, of course, go further if we wanted to. We could write this as negative 1 over 4 times 1 over x to the power of 4 plus c, which leads us to negative 1 over 4x to the power of 4 plus c. Let's look at two more examples. Okay, we're asked to integrate 3 over 2x to the power of 5. Just as we saw previously, there's a nice little trick here to make sure we avoid silly errors in our arithmetic, and that is to take whatever number is multiplying the function inside the integral outside of it. In other words, we can write this as 3 over 2 times the integral of 1 over x to the power of 5 dx. Now that we've done that, we can rewrite this as a negative power of x, which would look like 3 over 2 times the integral of x to the power of negative 5. And now using the power rule, we can go ahead and write that this equals to 3 over 2 times 1 over negative 5 plus 1 times x to the power of negative 5 plus 1 plus c. That leads us to 3 over 2 times 1 over negative 4 times x to the power of negative 4 plus c. Multiplying the two fractions together leads us to 3 over 2 times negative 4, which is negative 8, times x to the power of negative 4 plus c. Now 3 over negative 8 is just negative 3 eighths, so that would be negative 3 eighths, and we can write x to the power of negative 4 as 1 over x to the power of 4 plus c. Finally, we can say, state that this equals to negative 3 over 8x to the power of 4 plus c. Now for one last example, and we're adding this one simply because it's quite a common exam type question. We're asked to integrate 3 plus x to the power of 4 over x squared. To integrate this using the power rule, the trick is to realize that we can start by rewriting this as two separate integrals. In other words, we can write this as follows. This is equal to 3 over x squared plus x to the power of 4 over x squared dx. And I should add the, write those in parentheses. In other words, we can split this into two separate terms, and each of those two terms leads to the following. I can write the first term as a negative power of x, so that would be 3 times x to the negative 2, and for the second term, well, x to the power of 4 over x squared is equal to x squared. And now, I can integrate each of these two terms one by one, or as though they were on its own. So that would lead us to the following. Using the power rule, we have for the first one, 3 over negative 2 plus 1 times x to the power of negative 2 plus 1. Plus the power rule for the second term, 1 over 2 plus 1 times x to the power of 2 plus 1. And we must add a constant of integration. This leads us to 3 over negative 1 
times x to the power of negative 2 plus 1, which is negative 1, plus 1 over 3 times x to the power of 3 plus c. 3 over negative 1 is just negative 3, so that's negative 3 times x to the power of negative 1, plus 1 third times x cubed, that's just x cubed over 3, plus c. We could stop here, and of course we could also write this as negative 3 over x plus x cubed over 3 plus c. And there we have it. That's how we can use the power rule for integration to deal with functions on which there is a power of x on the denominator. I hope that helps.